You're watching InfoSec Bytes, a crash course in information security for journalists. We're based at the Center for Investigative Journalism in London and supported by the Logan Foundation. This video is part one of a comprehensive overview of all of the specialist software on the Tails operating system. This video is provided for information only. It cannot replace the advice of a trained security professional. If lives or safety depend on your security, please seek the advice of an expert. The Centre for Investigative Journalism is a pioneer in providing expert information security training services to journalists and journalistic institutions. To consult with an expert through the CIJ, or to arrange a CIJ training session, contact the address on screen. The tutorial you are about to watch is part of a series on the TAILS operating system. If you haven't yet, make sure you watch our other videos on TAILS. Click or tap on the pop-up message to access them. So now you have TAILS installed, you have it set up, you have your persistence enabled, and you know your way around the basic TAILS interface. You're all set to start using TAILS. But what to do? First things first, you probably want to connect to the internet. You do this by clicking on the application indicator at the top right hand corner of the screen and clicking on the Wi-Fi Not Connected option. Now click Select Network. A Wi-Fi network selection box will pop up, displaying all of the available Wi-Fi networks in your local area. A word of warning before you get going here. Wi-Fi networks can be dangerous things to use. If it's your home Wi-Fi network and you control the Wi-Fi router, then it's probably a much safer bet than a public Wi-Fi network. But someone who controls the Wi-Fi router could potentially set it up so that all connections to it are logged or recorded. They could potentially eavesdrop on your internet activity, or they could try to pinch your passwords, or they could use your Wi-Fi network to infect your computer with malware, which could then be used to spy on you. Tails protects you against temps to do most of these things, but nothing in information security is ever a sure thing. It is a good idea to practice caution about the Wi-Fi networks that you connect to, and always make sure that you secure your home Wi-Fi network with a strong passphrase, not the default one. Click on the Wi-Fi network that you want to use and then click on the Connect button. You should now be asked for your Wi-Fi passphrase. Type it in and then click Connect. And now wait while Tails connects to your Wi-Fi network. Now, here's where things get a bit different, and it has to do with Tor. In previous videos, we've explained how Tails exclusively uses Tor to connect to the internet. If you need a recap on Tor and Tails, watch our videos Introduction to Tor and Introduction to Tails. Click or tap on the pop-up message to access them now. In any case, Tails can only connect to the internet over Tor. This means that once you are connected to the internet, Tails must then boot up a system-wide instance of Tor, over which you can then access the internet. All connections to the internet outside of Tor are blocked, so you can't actually connect until Tor is started up. A notification will appear telling you that Tails is synchronizing the system's clock. Tails needs an accurate clock to work properly. Sometimes it takes a few minutes for Tails to properly start up, so you just have to be patient and wait for it to work. If it doesn't work after a few minutes, try disconnecting and reconnecting to your Wi-Fi network. Once Tails is started up, you will get a notification telling you that Tor is ready and that you can now access the internet. Now, if you want to, you can click on the Onion application indicator in the system tray and examine the precise Tor circuit Tails is using to connect to the internet. This explains where each of the Tor nodes in your circuit is and shows you which IP address you have been assigned and where your exit node is. Now that Tor has started, you can use the Tor browser. Launch it from the Applications menu or from the Dash. Tor Browser is more or less exactly the same as it is on Windows or Mac OS. For a good general overview, click or tap on the pop-up message to watch our full introduction to Tor Browser for Windows or Mac. We'll just run briefly over Tor Browser's features here, and also look at some of the features that are specific to Tails. When you browse the internet, your browser tells the website you are visiting the size of your browser window, so that it can fit the web page to the size of your window but this can be used to identify you and to track your browsing habits. So Tor Browser recommends against maximizing your screen. That's why in this video we leave Tor Browser with the window size it has when it starts up. If we now visit 
check.torproject.org, we can see that the check is positive and that our connection to the internet is secured over Tor. Just like on Tor browser on Windows and Mac, you can reset Tor browser completely while also changing your Tor circuit by clicking on the small onion icon beside the address bar and choosing New Identity and then choosing Yes when asked to confirm. Tor browser will reset and dump you back on the Tails website. You can also change your Tor circuit without resetting Tails by clicking on the onion icon and clicking the New Tor circuit for this site option. If you're on the Tor check page, you'll see the IP address change when you do this. One thing you should know about while using Tor on Tails is the Tor browser folder. One of the most vulnerable applications you can run on a computer is a web browser. This is because it is the app that is most open to the World Wide Web. It visits sites all over the world and interacts with numerous different technologies, such as JavaScript and Flash, which can often be exploited to compromise your browser. And once your browser is compromised, it is possible for the compromise to spread to the rest of your system. Tor Browser builds in a lot of defenses against getting compromised. But Tor Browser on Tails builds in an extra defense. On Tails, the Tor Browser is locked down as a security feature. System-wide rules prevent the Tor Browser from touching any files or any folders on your computer, except for the Tor Browser folder. This means that if you want to download a file, you must save it in the Tor Browser folder. Tails will not allow you to save it anywhere else. It also means that if you want to upload a file, Tails will not allow you to do so unless the file is placed in the Tor Browser folder. This can be a bit inconvenient, but it is worth it for the knowledge that if your browser is taken over by malicious code, it cannot get near any files that are saved outside of the Tor Browser folder. Now to complicate things slightly more. You'll remember persistence from our Tails persistence video. If you do not have persistence enabled on Tails, there is only one Tor Browser folder. But if you have persistence enabled, there are two Tor Browser folders, the normal one and another one, the Tor Browser Persistent folder. The latter is located within the Persistent folder, which means that anything saved into it is kept even after you shut down your computer. Tor Browser can download files to and upload files from either of these folders. The only difference is that if you save files in the Tor Browser Persistent folder, they will remain there until you delete them. Whereas if you save the files in the normal Tor Browser folder, they will be forgotten once you shut down the computer, and they will be gone next time you boot the system up. So that's Tor Browser on Tails. The next thing we'll look at is the other web browser on Tails, the Unsafe Browser. If you've ever connected to a public Wi-Fi in a hotel or in a cafe, Sometimes you are faced with a login page in your browser the first time you try to access the web. Because all networking on Tails goes over Tor, including the Tor browser, if you try to connect to this kind of Wi-Fi network on Tails, you will be unable to sign in because Tor is incompatible with this kind of sign-in page. In order to address this, Tails includes the unsafe browser. Tails has a firewall in place that makes sure that all apps that try to connect to the internet outside of Tor get blocked before they get out, but the unsafe browser punches a hole in the Tails firewall, connecting to the internet outside of Tor. This means that the unsafe browser gives away your real IP address, even while Tor browser masks your IP address. Naturally, this makes the unsafe browser unsafe, but it is also sometimes necessary. For this reason, you must be extra specially careful if you use the unsafe browser only to use it for the specific reason you launch it. You should not use the unsafe browser for any other web activity. It is accessing the internet directly, and everything you do on it can give away your identity. So that's the web browsers on Tails. What else? What about securely handling data? If you've watched our InfoSec Bytes videos on securely erasing files, you'll remember how much work it was that you had to download and install third-party software in order to securely erase files on Windows and Mac OS. For a recap on Secure Erasure, click or tap on the pop-up message to watch our overview video, Protecting Your Data. On Tails, it's much, much easier. All you have to do is right-click on a file you would like to erase. There is, of course, the perennial Move to Wastebasket option, but direct your attention to another one of the options, 
wipe. If you choose wipe, Tails gives you a confirmation dialog where you can choose the number of times to overwrite the file. Or you could just go ahead and click wipe, whereupon Tails performs a secure erasure of the selected file, overwriting it several times to ensure it's gone. Likewise, Tails allows you to securely wipe all of the free space on a disk. To do this, navigate to a folder on the relevant disk and right-click on some white space in the files window. You should see an option, Wipe Available Disk Space, in the right-click menu. Select this, and then, in the Confirmation dialog, click Wipe, and it starts. Depending on how big the drive is, it could take a while, so be patient. It couldn't be easier. Let's look at some of the other unusual software on Tails. First of all, the Disk Utility, or as it is known in Tails, Disks. Disks allows you to view all of the storage media you have connected to your Tails computer in the left-hand pane, and to click on any of them and view information about them in the right-hand pane. You can use disks to securely format your storage media, for example an external hard drive or a USB, securely erasing all of the data on it and making it ready to be used again. To do this, click on the removable media you would like to securely format in the left-hand pane. Make absolutely certain it is the correct one, because you don't want to erase the wrong disk. Next, click on the COG icon and choose Format. Here you can choose the name the disk will have after the format, but the important thing is to click on the drop-down menu beside Erase and select Overwrite Existing Data with Zeros. From then on, if you click Format and then Confirm, the drive will be fully formatted. Although it may take a long time, all data on it will be securely erased and unrecoverable. You can also use the disk utility to fully encrypt removable drives. To do this, follow the same procedure to format the drive. But remember to click on the drop-down menu beside Type and choose the option Encrypted, compatible with Linux systems LUKS plus EXT4. The Format volume window will change, prompting you for a passphrase. Enter the passphrase you will use to encrypt the external drive, twice, and then click on Format, and Confirm, and all data on the drive will be erased, and it will be reformatted with an encrypted file system, which can only be accessed if you have the passphrase. Once it's done, when you insert the encrypted drive, to access the drive, find it in Files in the left-hand column. When you click on it, you should be prompted for the passphrase. Type it in and press Enter, and the encrypted drive should be unlocked. To re-lock it, just use the eject icon to eject the drive. Now let's look at a program called the Metadata Anonymization Toolkit. This is a specialist app that is used to remove identifying information from your files. When you create a Word document or a PDF or an image file, your application often saves information into the file as metadata. This can include the time the file was created, the software that was used, and information about the owner of the computer, including your name or your company. On top of this, sometimes even just opening a file can embed metadata about you into the file. Metadata is a major hazard of working with data, especially if you need to stay anonymous or to protect the identity of your source. A file that you work on, which you then send to someone else, might contain information about you tying you to that file. Likewise, if a source sends you a file, it might contain metadata about them, so you don't want to publish it without scrubbing the metadata. The Metadata Anonymization Toolkit tries to address this by inspecting files for telltale metadata and then, if you want, stripping it all away, leaving a scrubbed file in its place. A warning, though, the toolkit may not be able to remove all kinds of metadata. Using it does not guarantee safety. If the stakes are high and you're worried about metadata, you should consult an expert in order to make sure this is done properly. The next application we're going to look at is KeyPass, your Tails password manager. And after that, we're going to look over the rest of Tails specialist software. But that's the end of part one of Tails software. To finish our overview of Tails software, click or tap on the pop-up message and choose Software on Tails, part two. Thanks for watching InfoSec Bytes. If you found this video useful, please share it widely with your colleagues and co-workers.
To support the Centre for Investigative Journalism with a donation, please visit tcij.org forward slash donate. And if you would like to watch our other videos, please go to infosecbytes.org or subscribe to our channel below.